From the Journal of Aframus Longjourney, Pilgrim, with notes by Avos Tor, scholar of Reeve Library. True day, 23rd cycle, 7th year, 81st turn, 82nd day in the trees. I looked into the book again. It remains mostly incomprehensible, but today there were a few interesting passages. On the first page, I was able to read, In a hill, over a lake, there was a tomb, and in this tomb there lived a man named Elger Welv. He was not the intended resident of the tomb. That worthy was near the back, in a casket, and though he was not dead, neither did he live. Neither of them had left the tomb in over a hundred years. The king couldn't and Elger was afraid. He feared death and age, for only the tomb's magic sustained him. It is indecipherable after that. There is a picture of a cave in a hill, surrounded by twisty branches and old underbrush. A human's face peeks out from the opening, and I can almost smell myrrh rising from the page. I wonder if it is a true story. Thorn says that this is not the first such king he has heard of. Apparently, some kings choose to remain behind in case their people need them again. I do not like the idea very much. Magic can grant immortality, true, but it is rarely satisfactory in the long run. I would not like to be the one to pay the price. Note. If you travel in the woods long enough, the odds that you will encounter one of these tombs becomes a near certainty. They are all over the woods, and contain all manner of kings, knights, wizards, and emperors, all waiting for the day when they will be needed again. Should you find yourself accidentally intruding on such a place, first take care not to run afoul of magical or physical traps even if they are no longer fully operational by the time you arrive, and they likely won't be, they may still destabilize the tomb, causing either a collapse or a chronotic unwinding event. If you meet with a guardian of the tomb, or with its occupant, remember that it's impolite to tell them that the time has come when it really hasn't. It's not funny, and it causes headaches all around. The other entries are more cryptic, and scattered throughout the book. They wear the bones of their enemies, but be not fooled, for they are of the blood. Walking in sunlight, the pair moved where their friends could not. Final price will be a friendship. Will you know, in time, next to that last, there is a picture of chains and an open hand. It is strange, but I think that if I could just read the rest of the text, I would understand everything, including who gave us this book. I've also begun carving Torn's walking stick. I believe I will carve his face into the top of it, where there is a thick knob of wood. Lower down, I will carve leaves and bells, I think. Hopefully, he will be pleased when I am finished.